Young Show. Hello? It was one of our most famous American novelists who said that marriage, humanly speaking, is a job. Tonight, we'd like you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Henry Underwood. The telephone book is full of addresses. We can look for weeks, you and I. What shall I do with this? The top drawer of my desk. Your uh, fiancé, Miss Campbell? Seems to me I, I have seen this man in our neighborhood of late. I wouldn't be surprised. Poor man. He must be desolate to have lost you. If so, no one would know it by his actions. Well, I can For heaven's sake, it. Henry, what are you trying to do? Revive the walkathon? I'm sorry. I'll go outside. Wouldn't it be better just to tell me what's on your mind? What do you mean? Oh, I don't know, dear, but you do. I'm trying to tell me something for the last half hour. Haven't you? Yes. I suppose so. That is, I don't quite know how to go about it. <laughs> Fine advertising executive you are. No dry words. Margaret, this isn't funny. My sister and I were Sorry. That's all right. Do you mind if I turn this thing off? Of course not. Margaret. Yes? I have always considered myself an honorable man. Has anyone doubted it? What? No, of course not. Margaret. Uh, certainly you have noticed lately that I haven't been home much for dinner. Yes, yes, I had. Well, the fact is, I haven't always been working. Well, it's not exactly that either. I have been working most of the time with a young lady. I see. Now, you understand. I want to do the right thing. Have you decided just what is the right thing? Well, under the circumstances, I think the only honorable thing is that uh, we... or that you... Get a divorce? Well, yes. I see. Well, is that all you're going to do? Just sit there and keep saying, I see? I've never been asked for a divorce before. What do you expect me to do? Well, I don't know what I expected, but we've been married for 15 years, Margaret, and I thought surely there'd be some sort of a... I don't want to disappoint you, Henry, but swooning is rather out of date. just don't really believe it yet. You'll have to give me time to get used to the idea. Do you plan to go up to camp and tell the boys or wait till they get home? You want me to tell them? Oh, we can't very well keep it a secret from them. Well, I didn't mean that. But you've always... I mean, I thought that, that you... Do your dirty work. All right. I'll just line them up and I'll say, boys, your father has found a new playmate Margaret, and he wants... You're making it sound so... so... Sordid. Margaret. Henry. I'm very tired. Do you want to sleep in the guest room, or shall I? Oh, I will. I don't want to put you out. No, of course not. Good morning, Mr. Underwood. Get me some coffee, Willie. Yes, sir. <gasps> it's bad enough you're late. You don't have to be grumpy, too. Who's grumpy? You are. And 
I'm the one who should be grumpy. I've been waiting 15 minutes for you to okay these layoffs. Big deal. Now, just a minute. If you think... You didn't tell her, did you? Now, don't talk to me as if I were a child who hadn't done his homework. Of course I told her. Well? Well, it's just like I told you. Margaret's a remarkable woman. She won't cause us any trouble. <laughs> You know what time it is? Why didn't you wake me up? Did you forget to lay my clothes out? What's the matter with you? Are you sick or something? No. Well, what about my breakfast? Oh, did you plan to have breakfast here? Plan? I've been having it here every morning for 15 years. But this morning, different. Oh. Well, I don't have time to have breakfast anyway. Is there any coffee left in this thing that I can... No. Oh, Henry? What? Do you mean to have dinner here tonight? I have an appointment tonight. With Al Beckett. You can check it. Why should I? It's just that I've been thinking over our situation, and I'm ready to discuss it whenever you are. I do have an appointment tonight, and it's terribly important. Will tomorrow not be all right? Fine. Henry? What? Be sure and take your shirts to the laundry. You called me back in here for that? Yes. I've got to get out of here. What are you doing here? Beckett couldn't see me till later. I have to eat and run. Oh, oh. Boy, that steak looks and smells good. I'm starved. Oh, I'm sorry. I only bought one. Uh, you should have called me. Called you? Hmm. I called you when I'm not coming home. Well, that was before the rules changed. And anyway, you told me this morning you weren't going to be here. All right, it's my fault. Is there anything else to eat in the house? Nothing that isn't frozen solid. Well, I have to eat something. I can't talk business or anything else on an empty stomach. The beanery might still be open if you hurry. The beanery? I can't think of any place else around here, can you? I haven't got time to eat any place else. I suppose the tomain is preferable to malnutrition. Yeah, well, you better hurry. Oh, Henry! You better take your shirts to the laundry. Only a woman would think of something like that at a time like this. What'd you say? Nothing. Uh, if he was planning on the dinner, it's kind of late for the dinner. Yes, I know. <clears throat> Most of our dinner crowd eats a little early, as soon as they get off work, you know what I mean? Yes. I think I'll have the uh, roast beef. You know, that's a good choice. If I say so myself, the roast beef is very good tonight. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. That's probably why we're all out of it. Listen, Mac, you're wasting your time. None of them entries is left. Well, what'd you show me the menu for? Look, how about me fixing you a nice hamburger? Now I'm terribly hungry. Uh, is something left? Say, you know, there might be something left in the luncheon special. You want I should take yeah. a look? But just bring it to me. I don't have much time. Yes, sir. We wasn't very busy at lunch. This is your lucky day, Mac. Lamb stew. I've thought it all through thoroughly, and I think by using the cartoon approach on this particular angle... Excuse me. Heartburn. Hank, I don't think you've heard a dozen words I've said. I'm very sorry, Gloria. Well, it's not too bad with me, but if you're this indifferent when Beckett's around, he'll pull the account right out. And... Excuse me. I'm not indifferent. It's just that I haven't been able to give it much time or attention. Well, you know how much this means to us. If Beckett likes the way we handle this, we can set up our own agency and take the account with us. Now, what could be more important than that? I didn't say anything was more... Excuse me. More important. I haven't been getting much sleep lately, and I'm hungry most of the time. Oh, poor lamb. Oh, darling, why don't you move into town and we could eat together and I could watch out for now, you. I can't move out of the house until I've told the boys. It wouldn't be right. I suppose not. I'll tell you what. How would you like to come to my place for dinner tonight? Really? I'll leave early and cook it myself. Why, you'd be marvelous. Oh, 
wonderful. You know, you're an absolute doll to do this. Well, I wouldn't want to cook for a living, but it's fun now and then. Well, you'll get used to that after we're married. Why, darling, I'll still be working. Did you expect to eat at home? Well, I sort of took it for granted that we'd, uh... I guess I did. <laughs> I guess I didn't stop to think about it. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. All right. Darling, do you realize this is the first time we've had dinner really alone and not in a crowded restaurant? Here's to dinner alone and us. To us. Oh. Hmm. I'll be right back. Well, close your eyes. You know, I think we should have had dinner alone more often. Also, I've never been so hungry in my whole life. Dinner is served. Perhaps too. Oh, I knew you'd be surprised. That was a marvelous dinner, Mark. Well, thank you. Sure you wouldn't like another piece of cake? It would be suicide. <laughs> Maybe later then, hmm? Mm -hmm. Now, Henry, <clears throat> I've written down a few things that I think we ought to talk about. All right. Because I realize I haven't thought of everything, but I, I think we can decide on most things be, before we see the lawyers, don't you? Whatever you say, Margaret. Yes. Yeah. I want to know that I'm, I'm grateful for your attitude. I doubt very much that you know my attitude. Anyway, we both agree that there should be no scandal on account of the boys. Right. Fine. Now, about the house. Since everything in this state is community property, uh, one of us will have to buy it from the other. Or we can sell it and uh, divide the proceeds, huh? Well, now, there's no need to do either. I intend for you to have the house. Oh, but I won't need it. And you might. What do you mean you won't need it? You have to live somewhere. This is the only home the boys have ever known. Well, now, that's something else. I am going to give you an uncontested divorce on one condition. That you take full custody of the boys. You're giving the boys to me? Well, you're their father. Well, of course I am, but I also work for a living, remember? How can I take care of three boys and a job, too? Well, you do intend to get married, don't you? Certainly. Well, then I don't see what the problem is. I mean, after all, two parents should be able to make a more normal home atmosphere than one, don't you think? I don't know. Uh, Gloria... Of course, I'll expect full visitation rights, though. I can't see why you don't stay right here and keep the boys at home the way it's always been. There is nothing that I could do that could keep things the way they've always been. Yes, well, of course, that's true. Besides, I'll be working, too. Well, now, there's no reason for you to work, Margaret. I'm not the richest man in the world, but I'm not the stingiest, either. Well, it isn't a question of money. I want to work. But why do you want to work? You've never worked one day in your entire life. Why do you want to start now? Well, that's no mystery. I want to meet people. M meet people? You know all kinds of people. Mm-hmm. From the clubs, the PTA, the Boy Scouts. All married. I see. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, that's why I hoped you'd buy my share of the house. So I could use some of the money to buy a new wardrobe. I think I'm actually shocked. Well, why? I'm fairly young and reasonably attractive. Well, surely you didn't expect me to spend the rest of my life alone. I don't know what I expected, but I certainly didn't expect this, this brazen manhunt. Oh, well, now that's hardly fair. You have found a new life for yourself, and I think I'm entitled to the same privilege. Gloria, and the boys. I somehow don't picture the entire... Henry, either you take the boys, or there will be no divorce. What's the matter with you? What's the matter? Do you have any idea of the turmoil my personal life is in? 
Well, of course I do, darling. But, but you have to be objective about these objective? things. Objective? I'm changing a way of life that has lasted for 15 years. It's not like switching to daylight saving, you know. There's still no reason to fall apart. Hank, I work like a slave on those layouts, and this is my chance for a little recognition. Well, you, you just can't very well expect me to ooze sympathy when you're not holding up your end of the deal. I'm beginning to wonder exactly what I do expect of you, Gloria. Darling, you're really overwrought. Why don't we go have a long, leisurely lunch and forget all about it? Well, I could use a breather. We won't even talk about it. Oh, that's a deal. I'll work on it tonight. Good. Oh. Hi, fine, Carl. How are you? Yeah. Well, of course I expect the kids to play in the tennis tournament. They're coming back from camp next week. Come in. I'll help organize the ticket committee. But, well, I, of course I know the rule about the parents having to help, but Margaret always does. She did? Well, Carl, I'll have to call you back in a minute. I'll see what I can do and call you back. Right. Hello, Mr. Grimes. Good evening, Mr. Underwood. Uh, Ms. Underwood isn't home. I didn't come to see Ms. Underwood. She told me I'd have to talk to you this year. Oh, ha have a seat, Mr. Uh, Grimes. Thank you. Ms. Underwood generally offers me a beer. Oh, uh, will you have a beer? Yes, thank you. Came to see you about the trim on the house. What about it? Needs painting. Well, I guess you better paint it. Uh, what kind of paint do you want? Oh, whatever kind you ordinarily use, I suppose. Ms. Underwood knows about almost as much about painting as I do. Makes for a lively discussion. Yeah, well, I'll just have to trust you. What about the color? Well, uh, you know what co color it should be. What a... There's shades, you know. I, I thought you might want to consider them. No, I'm, I'm sure that you'll do it just fine. About the price. I'm afraid things have gone away up since the last time I did it. I can't think of anything that hasn't gone way up. How does 200... And fifty dollars sound. Sounds reasonable. It does? You don't want to talk about it? No. Well, everybody talks about the price. Well, I would if I had time, Mr. Grimes, but I have a lot of work to do tonight. When do you want me to get started on it? Just whenever it's convenient to you. Well, I guess I'll get right on it. Oh, then. that'll be fine. Good night. Good night. I must say, I'd rather deal with Ms. Underwood. Puts a lot more joy in a transaction. Where have you been? Shopping? The store's closed hours ago. Oh, I know. But my feet got tired, so I went to a movie. I could have gotten more work done in the information booth at Grand Central. Uh, Millie Rogers wants you to call her. Well, I'll call her tomorrow. Look. Isn't that cute? What is it? Where's the rest of it? It's a bathing suit, and that's all there is. Would that be a little chilly for Reno? Oh, I'm not going to Reno. I'm going to Las Vegas. Las Vegas? Have you lost your mind? Do you have any idea the kind of characters you're going to run into there? Yes. Isn't it exciting? Exciting? What's come over you? Well, it's very simple. This is probably the only divorce I'll ever have. And I intend to enjoy it. I don't know where I ever got the idea that you were a sensible woman. Well, say love you. You got caught in a gambling raid. Oh, silly. This was strictly good luck. I ran into Ernie Stoddard, and he asked us to dinner tonight. Well, that's too bad I'm all tied up tonight. Darling, didn't you hear me? Ernie Stoddard, Beckett's right-hand man. And he asked us. So naturally, I accepted. Well, you shouldn't have. I can't go. Why can't you go? Because I have a meeting with a ticket committee for the club's junior tennis tournament. Oh, you've got to be joking. No, I'm the chairman. Hank, if I didn't know you so well, I'd swear you're cracking up. Doesn't it occur to you that the junior tennis tournament is a little less important than a big business deal that can put you in business for yourself? Gloria, that's something I've been wanting to talk to you about. 
I'm not going into business for myself. You are cracking up. No, I don't think so. I'm pretty well fixed here. I have a good job and good money with none of the worry or the overhead. Well, that's yummy for you. This, this was to be my big chance. Well, that's something else that I want to talk to you about. I'm not sure I'm ready for anything else. You're as ready as you'll ever be. The fact is, Gloria, that you won't be working after we're married. Why won't I? Because Margaret's giving us the boys. Margaret's giving us the boys? Yes. And you can't very well make a good home for them and work, too. You're out of your mind. Well, now, you've always known that I have children. Even if I'd only gotten them for part of the time, you must certainly have expected to change your way of life. No. No, I didn't. I expected that we would set up our own agency as partners. I, I don't know anything about kids. Well, darling, isn't this a little unusual? I mean, after all, doesn't the court usually award the children to the mother? Usually. But in this case, it wasn't up to the court to decide. Well, whose decision was it? Margaret's. Well, then you just have to talk to her. I've already talked to her. Well, you just have to tell her she can't do that. Gloria, let me spell this out for you. We're buying, not selling. Those are her terms. You mean you agreed to it? I did. I had no choice. Darling, why can't Margaret stay home and take care of them? She wants to work. We can give her more money. She doesn't want more money. She wants to work. Oh, no. She wants me to give up my career to become a permanent babysitter for her brats. Margaret never ducked a responsibility in her whole life. I've been a fool, but I'm sorry. Yes. I've been a fool. And I'm sorry. You had dinner? No. I was in too much of a hurry to get home. Had you? No, I wasn't hungry. Would you like to go out to dinner? To the beanery? I had something a little jazzier in mind. Maybe Las Vegas style. Oh. Yes, I'd like that. Just give me a minute, Tim. Margaret. Yes. Thank you. Welcome home, Henry. A clever wife sees through her husband. A good wife sees her husband through. Well, good night. And we'll see you next week.